Good evening, everybody. This is Steve Lionel, Chair of the City of Nashville Zoning Board of Adjustment, and this is the August 10th, 2021 Zoning Board meeting. This evening's meeting will be conducted in a hybrid format. The meeting is accessible in person in room 208 of Nashville City Hall, 229 Main Street, and via Zoom at the link posted in all public meeting agendas. The meeting can be streamed through the city's website, nashvillemh.gov slash 318 slash CTV on Nashville's community link. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast Channel 16. Members of the public, representatives of the applicant, have been encouraged to attend the meeting via Zoom, though they may attend in person at City Hall. Real-time comment during the meeting can be addressed to the board using Zoom or at City Hall room 208. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event that the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. The chair is in control of the meeting. To the extent practicable and advisable, the board will follow the procedures as identified in its bylaws. The applicant will present the applicant's case followed by questions by the board. We will allow for a rebuttal period as best as possible for persons wishing to speak in favor or with questions or opposition before the board deliberates and determines an outcome. All participants should endeavor to comply with time frames of 15 minutes maximum for the applicant and five minutes each for anyone wishing to speak in favor or in opposition or with questions. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Tonight, we will be hearing requests for deviation from the National Zoning Code in the form of applications for special exceptions and variances. A special exception is a request that seeks permission to do something that the zoning ordinance permits only under special circumstances. To grant a special exception, five points of law are required to be met. These are outlined in the application and will be summarized in board motions. A variance is a request that seeks permission to do something that ordinance does not permit. Variances also have five points of law to be met, different from those for special exceptions. Per the City of Nashville bylaws and State of New Hampshire revised statutes, a minimum of three or more affirmative votes are required to approve any application. In addition, this board will hear all scheduled cases if a quorum of three voting board members is present at this meeting, and we do have a quorum tonight. Any citizen has the right to contest the decision that this board makes. Should we make a decision that you believe is an error, you have the right to request a rehearing. A written rehearing request must be received by the City of Nashville Planning Department within 30 calendar days from the date of decision. Should this board not grant a rehearing request, you can file an appeal directly to the New Hampshire Superior Court. Please contact Mr. Falk of the Planning Department for more information. So for this meeting, we have the following full board members and tenants. We have myself, Steve Lionel, I'm the chair. Uh, we have online Ms. Mary Ellen McKay, who is our vice chair. Uh, we have Mr. Jack Courier, who is, serves as our clerk. We have Mr. J.P. Boucher. Uh, Mr. Rob Shaw could not be with us tonight. Uh, we also have the following board members, uh, alternate members in attendance. We have Mr. Jay Mancara and uh, is Estathia. On? There. Oh, yes, there she is. Okay, Estathia Boris is uh, another alternate member. In addition to the board members, we also have with us Mr. Carter Falk, Deputy Planning Manager, Ms. Kate Poirier, Zoning Coordinator, and Mr. Matt Sullivan, Planning Department Director. So we'll start the meeting by taking roll call attendance. For meetings participating by Zoom, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you which is required under the right to know law. Mary Ellen McKay. I'm here in my office at home and I'm alone. Jack Courier. Uh, present in the room. <clears throat> J.P. Boucher. Present. Jay Mancara. Present. Nefstathia Boris. Present. I'm at home and I'm. Um, no one is in the room with me. And I'm Steve Lionel and I'm here in person. Uh, alternates may fully participate in discussions and will vote only if a full board member recuses themselves or if there are fewer than five full board members in attendance, uh, which there are tonight. There's only four full, full board members. So uh, for each case, I will indicate which uh, alternate is going to be voting. Um, Mr. Falk, are there any changes to the agenda? No, there are not. Thank you. Okay, I will now read the first case into the record, and Mr. Mancara will be voting on this case. Okay. 
Uh, before I get started, though, are any questions on procedures from any of the people present? Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Chair, if I may, I, I would recommend that Mr. McCara vote on all cases this evening being the in-person attendee rather than the remote attendee voting on the proceedings. Um, okay, I, I can go with that. Uh, do, you, do you mind, Ms. Boris? Not at all. Okay, very good. Okay, Mr. McCara will be uh, voting on all cases then. Any other uh, questions or uh, about procedure? No, okay. First case, owner Springs One LLC. Applicant is the Springs Condo Association. Address is 48 Scenic Drive, also known as 70, 701 West Hollis Street. Sheet F lot 59, requesting variance from land use code section 190-16, table 16-3 for minimum open space, 50% required, 50.3% existing, 49% proposed to allow up to 22 units to install eight foot by eight foot permeable paver patios. This is the R9 zone ward five. Uh, is there somebody here to present the case? Yes. Okay, uh, please uh, step up to the uh, lectern and it's a lectern, not a podium, I learned this. Uh, <laughs> and give your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you for giving us the opportunity opportunity to speak to our request for a zoning variance requiring green space or open space in our community. My name is Paul Risting. I am the president of the Springs Condominium Association, living at 4 Scenic Drive. And with me tonight is Pamela Kozik. She is the association secretary and my neighbor at 16 Scenic Drive. I would like to use just a small portion of this time to accomplish three goals. First, to frame our request. Second, to highlight the five areas of law outlined in our application. And third, to offer support for our request from our research. In framing our request, it's important we believe that the board understand we are an age-restricted community, 62 and older, meaning all of our owners bought into the community with one shared goal, that this would be our last home. We are fully owner occupied. We did not buy as an investment or to be landlords or to grow a family. We bought for the security and ability to comfortably live and manage our remaining years. Therefore, we make this request as neighbor to neighbor. There is no financial motive. We are not builders or developers. We are your neighbors seeking to expand the use of our property for our own enjoyment. The 1% allowance in green space may never be used, but as a condominium, our board seeks to achieve fairness by having it in reserve should more homeowners want a patio over time. If we say yes to those now requesting a patio, exhausting the 0.3% green space available to us without a variance, we would be forced to say no to others, creating a first come, first served situation, unfair to the majority of our homeowners. The five areas of law that the application asks us to consider, the public interest, the spirit of the ordinance, substantial justice being done to our homeowners, not bringing harm to surrounding properties and avoiding unnecessary hardship are addressed in our written application. But what I believe should be highlighted here is that the ordinance itself and these areas of legal concern all revolve around an intent to protect the environment. A measure I'm proud to say, supported by our, our entire condo community. With that in mind, our community is unique, uniquely positioned to put in place requirements that not, on, not only adhere to the spirit of the ordinance, but we believe actually accomplish the goal of the ordinance, fully protective of the environment. We will not remove trees or natural plantings. We will not disturb drainage. Our request and the willingness to use permeable pavers indeed assures that the open grass space we are talking about will continue 
to absorb, filter, and direct stormwater to its natural aquifer. The board of the SCA has the power to require the proper contractor, the process of installation, in the materials used to assure environmentally safe additions to our units. And that brings me to my third area of discussion, our research. When first contacting the city regarding open space, we were told that open space is defined as nothing man-made between the ground and the heavens. We accepted that definition for many months until we discovered that many cities and towns make an exception for permeable pavers because they are designed specifically to accomplish the same goal as Nashua's ordinance. In fact, some counties offer substantial rebates to homeowners who use permeable pavers and a proper installation, knowing that the cost is at least 20% more than any other patio paving materials. Prince George's County in Maryland offers up to a $4,000 rebate to individual homeowners. Without being an expert, the research shows that these slightly convex tiles with channels on all sides cause stormwater to flow freely into the stone dust below and then through crushed stone all acting as filtration before the soil absorbs the water naturally and directs it to the aquifer. This advance in environmentally safe materials should calm anyone's fears that our request would further endanger our already fragile ecosystem. Anecdotally, let me say that when at the counter down the hall, filing this request, Dora Brown, the city's energy manager, heard me mention permeable pavers and turned over her shoulder to say, they're great. We agree. I'm not a lawyer, not an engineer. I don't even garden, but if I can answer any questions, please ask. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions from the board? Mr. Herrier. Uh, do you, do you have any pictures of permeable pavers? I think I know what they look like, but I'm not really sure I do. I did not bring pictures. I did insert into the package a fact sheet on the permeable pavers. Mm -hmm. We are having a meeting on the 14th, should we be allowed to uh, continue with this project, where they're bringing samples to us. They are basically a very slightly convex cement-based topic that at the edge has a channel that filters water directly off the paper to directly below the paper. Okay. Okay. Ah, pictures yeah. there. Mr. Curry, there's many, I'm many see. different styles and types of them. Uh, there's a couple of sites in the city and nearby that have used them. Uh, they're, you know, the common one is the, the grass one on the left where it's like a little grass piece in the middle and you can even mow over them or drive over them. There's many different styles. Yeah, I guess I was just curious. You, so you hadn't picked a style. You were going for seeing if you get approval first and then pick a style. Is that correct? We have contacted the landscaper who is certified in installing these papers. Uh, he has given us quotes, financial quotes on a particular style, which is just the basic paper. Um, for an eight by eight patio behind it and individual unit. So the proposed insulation would always and only be behind the unit? Correct, yes. Um, yeah, because the pavers that I'm familiar with are more like to drive on. They're almost like a cinder block turned on the side. And I thought, hmm, you know, for a walking or a patio, that might be, you know, Maybe not a great choice, but I see those other styles that I, I hadn't seen. But okay, I, I'm okay. I, I'm all set. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? So the request. So the the request is: uh, Are you limiting the size of these patios to eight by eight? We are limiting the size of the patios. We also have limitations based on where the unit is. 
too close to the property line, no. Um, if it substantially disrupts topography, no. Uh, we're down to about 22 of the 31 units who would be able to make a request for a patio directly behind their unit. The 64 square feet is what the board is considering. That may reduce some to a six by 10 area in, instead of an eight by eight, only because of the situation directly to that lot. Thank you. Hey, um, on, on Zoom, uh, Ms. Boris, do you have any questions? I believe Ms. Boris has just- uh, oh, She just dropped off. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, Ms. McKay? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, uh, I, I have a, Sort of a simple question is, um, can you talk about uh, to the uh, impact on uh, use of the shared open space by other uh, other uh, occupants? Uh, that directly addresses the 0.3% that we do have available to us. The complex is a one street, all units facing onto that street from one side of the street complex. It has a clubhouse. The, the usable green space reserved is between that clubhouse and the next building much further down the street. That area, the 0.3%, about 600 square feet, 500 of it would be used for a 20 by 25 foot community patio. That's the current board's intent. Okay. Okay, if no other questions from the board, um, is there anybody present uh, who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Seeing anybody, is there anybody uh, with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Seeing anybody there? Uh, in that case, I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Uh, Mr. Boucher, your comments? In general, uh, I'm in favor of the application. Um, the applicants made it very clear on the intent of what's gonna happen there. I think, um, you know, with the, um, the control that the Condo Association has over uh, what they're requesting and what they're going to allow, I think that goes a long way with me. Um, again, you know, um, from the from a visual point of view, I, I think there's no really impact on anybody from a visual point of view. So I, I'm not concerned with that. Um, again, um, the permanent pav pavers again acting um, as if um, you know had the the area hasn't been disturbed. So again, you know, they took going a long way to not just put just anything down. Um, concerned about you know the this, the original design of the of the property and and what what had been done originally when when we had approved this um, this, uh, this project. So uh, in general, again, I don't see any reason why I would uh, not uh, vote to approve the. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Carter. Um, I was uh, keeping a open mind, I was, when I took a site walk, I thought, you know, perhaps some of the abutters in the back, when I kind of realized, realized the lay of the property was described, kind of got a screen on one side facing the other, a HEPA, I think it is. And I thought it was kind of hard to see behind the units, you know, could, could but I see some houses back there. Could, could some folks be kind of offended by, you know, more activity being, Put out in the back, so to speak. Haven't heard anything tonight, and I, I didn't expect that would be the case. Um, so that concern is gone away with me, and I think that uh, the application stands on its own for meeting the criteria. I don't think there's anything detrimental, you know, to the stormwater runoff. I think it'll all be infiltrated, and uh, I have confidence uh, that if this were approved, the homeowner association will will control and, uh, you know, stick to the plan. So I'm, I'm, I have support for it. 
Thank you. Mr. McCarrick. I, I do support the application. I, I think that the uh, requested use outdoor patio is, is a reasonable use. The um, size is you know, just about as small as you can be there, not proposing anything uh, overly large, eight by eight or possibly six by 10. And uh, the use of the permeable pavers, I, I think does help mitigate any potential environmental impact from an increase in impervious. So I support the application. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McKay. Thank you. I'm in favor of the application for all of the aforementioned reasons. I think the um, applicant did an excellent job of explaining what they're trying to accomplish. They addressed many of the issues that we as zoning board would probably think of and come up with. And um, I, ha I think he did a really good job and I think they will benefit. Plus that 1% is just negligible. Thank you. I see Ms. Bora seems to have dropped off the meeting. Um, I, I too support the application. I think that the request is, is very minimal uh, in terms of, of the uh, percentage of, of open space. And um, this looks like a, a good benefit for the residents of your condo association. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to see the use of permeable behaviors um, those of you who have been uh, attending these meetings for a while know that I keep asking people about per, you know, permeable pavement and, and pavers when they're talking about paving over an area. So I'm glad to hear uh, that's being presented here. Um, would somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Boucher, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the area of variance for um, Springs One LLC owner, Springs Condominium Association, applicant 48 Cinder Drive, also known as 701 West Hall Street, Sheet F, Lot 59, requesting a variance from Linux Code Section 19 16, Table 16 F3, for a minimum open space of 50% required, 50.3% existing, 49% proposed to allow up to 22 units to install an 8 by 8 permeable paper patio to the R9 Zone Ward 5. We find that the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property. Given the special conditions of property, the benefit sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the variance. We find that it's within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. We find that it will not adversely affect property values surrounding parcels. We find that it's not contrary to public interest. We find that substantial justice will be served. So, again, make a motion to approve the area of variance. Do I have a second? Mr. Courier, thank you for your second. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Mr. McCarra, how do you vote? Mr. McCarra votes in favor. Ms. McKay, how do you vote? Ms. McKay votes in favor. All right, uh, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. Uh, that's five to nothing. Congratulations, your variance has been approved. Uh, please be aware there's a 30 day window of appeal. Uh, please contact the planning department if you have any questions. I appreciate your interest and your sincerity. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll move on to case number two. The owner is Yu Feng Soon, LLC. Address is 61 Amherst Street, sheet 63, lot 50, requesting the following variances. Use variance from land use code section 190-15, table 15-1, item 90, to allow mixed commercial and residential use, where commercial use is primarily on the first floor, with dwellings occupancy on the second floor in the RV zone, and two, special exception from land use code section 190-16E3A, table 16-2, for a minor encroachment of four feet into the seven foot required right side yard setback to construct an exterior staircase to provide access to proposed second story dwelling unit. This is the RV zone ward three. There's somebody here to present the case. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the board. My name is Morgan Hollis. I'm an attorney at Gottesman and Hollis, 39 East Pearl Street in Nashua. We're representing the owner of the property, Yung Feng Sun, LLC, uh, and my clients are Jennifer and Ron Chen. Jennifer is the dentist currently operating a dentistry practice out of that business. It is located at 61 Amherst Street, slot. 63-50 uh, on the town tax maps. 
property is approximately 11,845 square feet with a one story building, 28 by 60 feet, uh, which is 1,680 square feet in area. And that is a dental office. Uh, as I said, it's a single story with a brick front as, you, as it faces Amherst Street, that is the narrow portion of the building, 28 feet. And then it extends 60 feet back. There's a paved parking area to the rear of the building. The direct rear of Butter is Holman Stadium, and there are properties directly budding on each side, residential properties. Um, briefly, as a history, back in September of 1970, the then owner of the property, Dr. Uh, the dentist, Dr. LeBake, obtained a variance to allow use of that property for a dental office, and the building was constructed in 1907, as it sits today. In 2014, my clients uh, essentially took over the practice, took over the uh, property itself, changed the sign with the new name, but has remained as a dental practice. Uh, the property is located in an RV zone, and an RV zone allows uh, duplexes, and in some instances, uh, more than two family units, uh, and it also, of course, has single family units. The proposal is to go up a second story on this building for a single family unit on the second floor. The use of a single family unit in RV district is a permitted use. However, what is not permitted is a mixed use. And uh, if we were coming in with a raw piece of land, my clients would need a variance to obtain not the use for the residents, but the use for the uh, commercial or dentistry practice on the first floor. In this instance, there is a already a dentistry practice allowed on that property by variance. So uh, while uh, there is a slight argument to be made that a permitted use can go on the second floor, it is a, now going to be a total mixed use of the property and it's determined that variance will be required. So we're in here for a variance. I would point out the minimum lot size on the RV district is 6,000 square feet where a duplex could be constructed. And we have 11,800, almost 12,000 square feet. As I say, we're, uh, my client is proposing to simply go up a single flight, uh, add a second story onto this building, keep the facade facing Amherst Street, uh, same, the same texture, the same appearance, just add two windows on the second floor as you look out at Amherst Street. Um, they are also proposing an exterior staircase, which we'll get into in a minute because the only place, reasonable place to locate it is in the side yard setback, and we need a special exception to get that. But I'll address the variance points first, and then um, if the variance is granted, we can move to the special exception, or if the board wishes, we can take it all up at once. So moving to the uh, criteria, First criteria is it not be contrary to public interest. And uh, up on the board, as you can see, is a uh, recent survey. There is an old survey in the building file, but this is a recent survey located in the front of the building. You can see there's a dental building and it's approximately uh, 9.2 feet from the boundary of the closest property on what I would say the Southeast side. That is as you face the building on Amherst Street, looking at the building, it's to your right. Uh, to the rear of the building, of the existing building, it's slightly closer, it's eight and a half feet, and there is a garage of the neighbor property, which is right on the line. So it's a pretty tight area in there. Um, my clients did try to contact the abutting property, but uh, it's in what we call a reverse mortgage. The owner of the property is deceased. It was not listed in the inventory of the estate. We've been unable to get a hold of the mortgagee to talk to them. There's a picture of we're able to rotate it. You'll see on the screen a picture of uh, there it is. It's a small building. Our proposal is to go up one more story to make it look in appearance like the other buildings on either side of the two stories. The proposed use is not contrary to the public interest because A, it is a permitted use. So in the RB, the proposed use is permitted, a single family home. If it was a duplex, it would be permitted. The existing use is permitted already by variance, so it is a non-conforming but a permitted use. We're adding a permitted use and it will not change the character of the neighborhood, which is RB and consists of uh, a series of uh, one or two family or multifamily properties in the neighborhood. Uh, the proposed use is residential. One of the good things about uh, this property, unlike many in a 
more condensed urban zone is there's plenty of parking. There are seven paved identified parking spaces per an earlier plan approved by the city. And so there is more than adequate parking for both the dental practice and for the residential. Just to point it out, the residential requirements are for a duplex, you need two spaces per unit. For a single family, two spaces per unit. And for a dental practice, you need one for every 400 square feet, which would be four in this instance. There are uh, mixed commercial residential as one for every 1500 square feet. So going with the heavier requirement, it would be six required and we have seven. So there's more than adequate parking. The public water and sewer exists on site. There'll be no impact on the drainage, same roof area, no, no additional change other than this covered staircase. Uh, to impervious area uh, and in our opinion it would provide security to the neighborhood and that currently this is a single dentistry occupied building nobody there on weekends maybe nobody there on nights uh, this will now have a residence which will uh, provide some security to that lower use on the property there's always going to be something there number two will not be contrary to the spirit of the ordinance as you all know a residential b or a semi residential zone. The purpose is to keep residents, uh, not allow variant, not allow commercial use unless there's some particular reason why. Well, that use already exists. So what we're proposing is a use which is identical to the uses permitted and identical to those that are allowed. We don't believe that's contrary to the spirit uh, to add a permitted use to a pre-existing, a lawfully pre-existing use. Building will look like the neighbors. It will be two stories. Uh, although it's mixed, it will, uh, mixed use is generally not re, uh, allowed. It is uh, restrictive in order to prevent the commercial from coming in, not to prevent the residential from coming. So we think it's in keeping with the spirit of the ordinance. Substantial justice will be done in that the lot is basically underutilized. Uh, as you can see, there's a fair amount of open space. It's a very small building um, and there could be a lot more done on this property in terms of density use allowed under the ordinance. So uh, preventing the proposed permitted use would impose, in fact, a great deal of penalty upon the current owner. If you grant the variance, there's really no penalty to any of the abutters because the use is permitted and the use is like other neighbors. The building won't be increased in square footage. It's simply uh, on, on the footprint, it's simply going up. Uh, pointing out what the neighbors are, the immediate abutting neighbors. I don't know if you can call that uh, roll to that. Uh, we'll say, uh, have to buy I didn't know that, but it, it might have been any. Anyway, I'll just run through the properties. You can identify them by the lot numbers, and then 63 35 4. Uh, 35 is a four family. Lot 36 is a one family, that is the same size lot uh, as this one. All the other lots are smaller. 41 is a two family. One is the adjacent property, it's vacant. 34 in the back is a two family. Across the street is 19, that's a two family. 17 is a three family. And 25 is a seven family. Seven family. So uh, as I say, it's not out of character with the neighborhood and there'd be no harm to the public if you grant the variance. There'd be no diminution of value to the surrounding properties. This is a residential use. Uh, we're not proposing anything that will have any impact on anyone uh, that is any different than the uses that are out there. Uh, we'll put for expansion and only a second story increase. Special conditions exist such that the literal enforcement of the ordinance results in unnecessary hardship. In this case, the property is unique. It's a dental office in a residential neighborhood. Whether one can argue the uniqueness was created by a variance, uh, we have to take the properties as they are. It is a unique property because it is sitting in the middle of two families. Uh, for the most part, there is a single family adjacent to it on either side. But for the most part, there are two or more families. Um, it's a dental office in a residential neighborhood. Applying, it, it makes no sense to apply this ordinance. There's not even a fair and substantial relationship. There's no relationship to preventing a residential use on a property, which would otherwise be allowed to have a duplex or two family. Uh, one might 
be concerned that there is a commercial use and therefore you have some traffic in an area where uh, residents might live, but given the size of this lot and the layout of the parking lot itself, uh, and the fact that it's a fairly small um, home that's uh, proposed that it's 1600 square feet, and it's a single story, uh, single floor level. Uh, there is no purpose, any relationship between enforcing an ordinance prohibiting commercial in the residential zone and prohibiting this residence to go there. And so we think it's also a reasonable use given what's surrounding and the size of the lot. And with that, we think we've met all five conditions. And Mr. Chair, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm also happy to roll into the special exception if you want to hear that, or if you want to deliberate, I'll wait until you deliberate. Well, <clears throat> thank you. Um, we, we will, uh, we're going to take up the uh, use variance first and then the special exception. Um, but perhaps it would be useful if you just spend a, a, a couple of minutes uh, on the special exception. It shouldn't take very long. Sure, I, I, I can just cover it quickly. Uh, as I said, the, the existing survey on the property, which is shown up there, you have in the packets, reflects the proximity of the building between eight and a half and 9.2 feet away from the neighbor's property line where the staircase would go. Staircases run between three and four feet, three to five feet sometimes, depending on the size of the overhang. We could encroach a little bit, but I think 1.5, making a staircase 1.5 feet in width is just not appropriate. So that's why we're asking for relief. Uh, we would like to have up to four and a half feet. Uh, we have to maintain seven feet. So as a result, we're uh, suggesting and requesting a special exception to allow setback to become four feet where seven feet is required. We will still be four feet off the property line. Uh, this is this is not going to be where someone resides, so you're not going to have people living up there. The window won't be there, the noise won't be there, it's not a deck, it's not a doorway, it's simply a staircase access. Section 190-16 classifies this on a, as a minor encroachment and therefore we're allowed to come before you as a special exception, not a variance. Adding just to the outside staircase in and of itself isn't going to generate any traffic, isn't going to generate any uh, uh, impact on pedestrian safety. It's to the rear uh, of the building, not at the front. Uh, there will be no additional impact on any driveway or parking area as a result of the staircase. Uh, neighbor's garage to the, goes right up to the property line in the area of it, so you can see, but. My clients realize they have to deal with getting building permit, getting approvals, deal with the fire department, touch base with them. And obviously, that's uh, an issue that if the fire department has a problem, then there is a problem. Today, we don't have any problems. We've tried to check with the neighbor, uh, and I explained we weren't able to reach anyone who has any ownership interest in this property. So, briefly, it's listed as permitted by special exception in the ordinance. It's not out of character, it won't cause. Uh, a change in the character of the neighborhood, um, sewer and water available, so there's no impact on public services, and no impact on pedestrian safety, no the increase in traffic. Thank you. And uh, I will note that one of the <clears throat> requirements for the special exception is that a current survey uh, be done, and you included that in your application. We just saw that's, that uh, requirement has been met. Okay. Any uh, questions from the board? Mr. McCarroll. Maybe I missed it, um, but could, could you speak to the reason the applicant are seeking to uh, add the second floor unit? Um, well, originally they would have liked to have bought next door, but can't get a hold of anyone, so they would like to live there. Now, I, I obviously, if you grant it, you can't insist on the condition, so I, I didn't go forward with that, but that's the reason. Mr. Brewer, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, Looking at the site, you know, I noticed uh, like the front has a uh, stone on it. Uh, yes. What is the current use of pretty much that whole front in front of the building? Is it for parking or? Uh, the front area of the building, perhaps we can pull up the picture. On the plan of record in the city, and uh, I'm not sure everyone has it, but I can get it yes, the application. These are the old plans of records which haven't changed at all.
That's just uh, essentially open space. Okay, so it's is it used for parking now or proposed to be used for parking in no. the future? Okay. I'm just curious as to why the stone was there. But yeah, there's the building plan. Thank you. Um, the other question I have is was there any consideration to have the staircase say on the back of the building versus on the side of the building? And the rear entrance, the entrance to the down practice is in the back. Okay. You really don't want to build a staircase. It's also not wide enough to take a pitch up. Okay. So it's got to be on the side, which would mean it's either on the driveway side, which is sort of the front face of the building, mm -hmm. or it has to be on the back side. So back side makes the most sense. There's, as you can see, there was originally planned a walkway to go around the back, but the entrance is off the back side. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, any other questions from the board? Mr. Boucher, you have any questions? No. Thank you. Ms. McKay, do you have any questions? No, sir, I do not. Okay, and uh, I don't have any questions either. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Do not disturb this for me. Uh, okay. Uh, so, no more questions from the board. Is there anybody present who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Not seeing anybody. Is there anybody present who wishes to speak with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Not seeing anybody. Okay. Uh, so, given that, I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Uh, Mr. Courier, your comments. Um, I guess I, you know, I'm a uh, bit on the fence on this. Uh, I, I was just, I, I guess, the only concern I have for it is, and, uh, the attorney spoke to it briefly. When you have a business and a residence, at times I could see where a conflict comes in. Maybe students standing out for a school bus, waiting for a school bus, this sort of thing. And while I, you know, the, the application clearly speaks to adding a residence in a residential zone, I mean, I get that. The, the use of the commercial and the residence is to me more intense than a two unit home. Say if it were the other way, say if it was a single residence and there was a request to add a business to it, uh, to me that that's, that's a large request, but this is ending up that way. So I guess uh, I'm a little bit stuck on that, but I'm you know, looking forward to hearing uh, other members' opinions to see if they can get me over that. Thank you. Mr. McCarra. I, I, I started with this one also. Um, I am leaning in, in favor, and the, and the reason I'm leaning in favor is um, mainly because what's proposed is a permitted use in the neighborhood. So this is not a scenario where there is a expansion or greater intensity of a non-conforming use. Uh, I do recognize though, um, you know, Mr. Perrier's comments and, and that mixed use is different. Um, I don't know if I feel the same way. If, if this were a single family and we were looking to add you know, a commercial business, uh, so I, I'm struggling with, 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 with it a bit, but I'm leaning in favor simply because it is a um, permitted use that is being contemplated. And also, uh, you know, there's, there are other mixed properties and other properties of a greater intensity in the area. Uh, there are multifamily in the area. I can think of at least one other mixed use right down the street, the superette. Um, but again, I, I, I am struggling a bit. Thank you. Ms. McKay, any comments? <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I'm leaning in favor, and I'm leaning in favor because it doesn't seem out of character for what's happening at on that street in that neighborhood. Um, yes, it's a dentist's office, but it's, I don't know, it, a dentist office isn't like, that little superette right down the street. It's probably not going to attract the traffic and it just is not going to be that 
almost commercialized or industrial as it were. So um, I'm, yeah, I'm probably in favor of this application more than I am not. Thank you, Mr. Boucher. Uh, I'm also in favor of the application. Again, we spoke with, you know, we spoke to this is that um, the use that the additional use that we're requesting is something that is is approved in the maple. But um, also, again, the dentist office. You know, my my belief is that that dentist office has existed since 1970, was built specifically for that. So I think you have an existing use that's been there for many years, and we'd be again. Um, adding just a residential use. Um, I think Mr. McCarra spoke the fact that there are, I believe, some higher intensity, some similar um, things that I was thinking of the same thing so this is where the supermarket street, where I think in cities like ours and other cities, I think you see kind of that where there's residences over businesses and stuff. And I think that's typical. I think that's part of that character of that neighborhood. So again, I don't think this would be out of character with the neighborhood. Um, the intensity use, I, I think, again, um, I don't think this brings a huge intense use to, to the property. Um, I think there's an existing use um, that has obviously, to me, I don't think we hear anything that, that has lived pretty well with uh, the neighborhood. So, um, again, for those, for those reasons, I'm going to support the application. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I, I don't consider the use of the combination of the mixed use to be as intensive as a two family would be. And certainly we have more intense uses uh, elsewhere in the neighborhood. Um, I think that the uh, planned two story building would be, uh, would stick out less than uh, what's there now. And uh, I don't think this would uh, impair any of the the neighborhood characteristics at all. So I'm in support of the uh, application. Um, so Mr. Courier. I have a question. Sure. Uh, and really for Mr. Falk, is the original approval back in the 70s, was that, is that for a dentist office specific or just a, a commercial use? It was for a dental office. So I'm just, if, if in the future another business wanted to go in, right, like, I don't know, like, Hair cutting plates or something would that be a permitted use or would that? Uh, no, it would not. Since since the since the zone is a residential zone and the, the use was specific for a dental office, the hair salon is a totally different land use category. It would have to be a substantially similar use. Perhaps maybe like a podiatrist or an eye doctor might be something that's somewhat similar as far as impact and amount of traffic and things like that, but. No, not a hair salon or a little store. Well, I appreciate uh, the clarification on that because uh, I mean, I'm agreeing, especially what Mr. Lionel was saying that, uh, you know, uh, a dentist office from a commercial use is, 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 in my opinion, like a lighter use versus, you know, a heavier use like a super, super end. Sure. Uh, any other comments from the board before we make a motion? We're going to um, do the use variance first. Uh, somebody carry a motion? Okay, Mr. Boucher, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the use variance for Ben Su, LLC owner, 61 Emory Street, sheet 63, lot 50, requesting the following use variance for language code section 190. 15, table 15 1, number 90, to allow mixed commercial and residential use. Where commercial use is primarily on the first floor with dwellings occupancy on the second floor in an RV zone. We find that the variance is needed to enable the applicant's produce of the property given the special conditions of the property and the benefits sought by the applicant can, cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the variance. Uh, again, uh, we spoke of the fact that um, this um, dental office uh, has been in existence since 1970. It was, uh, again, uh, permitted un under uh, variance for specifically for a dental office. Um, the um, applicant is just looking to put a residence there, which is uh, an approved use uh, in in this zone. And again, um, we find that there are si similarities with the use uh, in the area um, as far as the impact of, the, of that use. 
um, is similar, and some of the, area, some of the um, uses in the area uh, seem to be maybe more impactful than what's being proposed. We find that it is within a spare intent of the audience. We find it will not aggressively affect property values surrounding parcels. We find it's not contrary to public interest, and we find it substantial justice being served. So, again, I make a motion to approve the use of variance. We have a second. Second. Mr. Nakara, thank you for your second. Any discussion of the motion? Uh, Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier <coughs> Mr. votes in favor. Mr. Minkara, how do you vote? Mr. Minkara votes in favor. Ms. McKay, how do you vote? Ms. McKay votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Uh, and I, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. It's five to nothing. Uh, congratulations. The use variance has been granted. Uh, we'll now move to the special exception. And we had a uh, presentation of that. So I think we can just uh, let's have a discussion of the special exception. Uh, any, does any member of the board want to make a comment about the special exception that hasn't been already covered? Not seeing anybody. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion for the special exception. Keep, keep my chops in order. Uh, I'd like to make uh, a motion to approve the special exception. The owner is Yu Feng Soon LLC. 61 Amherst Street, sheet 63, lot 50, requesting special exception from land use code section 190-16E3A, table 16-2 for a minor encroachment of four feet into the seven foot required right side yard setback to construct an exterior staircase to, pro to provide access to a proposed second story dwelling unit. This is the RV zone board three. Uh, this is listed in the table of uses as a minor encroachment uh, the board believes this will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. Uh, it will have no effect on uh, public water, drainage, or sewer or other municipal systems. The special regulations are fulfilled. Uh, we do have a, a current survey included in the application, and this will not impair the integrity or be out of character with the neighborhood or be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the residents. Uh, do I have a second, please? Mr. McCara, thank you for your second. Any discussion of the motion? Okay. Uh, Mr. McCara, how do you vote? Mr. McCara votes in favor. Ms. McKay, how do you vote? Ms. McKay votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Lionel vote in favor. It's five to nothing. Uh, congratulations. Special exception has been approved. Uh, please be aware there's a 30 day window of appeal. Uh, please contact the planning department if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Mark. Moving on to our last case of the evening. Um, owner is Jeffrey Lynch. Address is 496 Main Dunstable Road, Sheet C, Lot 1999. Requesting variance from land use code section 190 264 to exceed maximum 40% accessory use area to allow a proposed 4,400 square foot house on a newly created lot that has a, an existing 3,600 square foot barn with a proposed 6,000 square foot barn addition. This is the R30 zone word five. Um, I saw Mr. Lynch on the Zoom, I believe. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, is Attorney Premier going to present? And Mr. Petropoulos. Okay, who, who is going to present this? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, for the record, my name is Jim Petropoulos. I'm a civil engineer with Hainer Swanson um, in my office at 3 Congress Street. And I'm with the applicant, uh, Jeff Lynch, as well. Um, also joining us via Zoom is attorney Prunier. And with the chair's permission, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, have both attorney Prunier and I represent um, and, and prepare, or, I'm sorry, present uh, this particular application. Um, I'll speak to the details of the property. I'll go over the map so you have a comfort level with it. And then I'll turn it over to Mr. Prunier to address the requirements for our variance request. Uh, we will be mindful of the 15 minutes. I think we can get it done. Um, I would like to start by asking Carter if he could share the screen with me. Carter, is that possible? Yep, Kate will do it. We've yes. got up all set. It's on right now. Actually, it wasn't. Well, I need to give him permission. Okay. One second, Jim. You're all good. Yep. 
Okay, now that I have it, I can't find the flag. No, you probably can't see that, right? Oh, here it is. Okay. All right, so I'd like to get everybody kind of located first for this particular request. Um, as read into the record, we're seeking a variance of 192.64 to allow an accessory use to exceed 40% of the principal use area. Now the, the property in question is 496 Main Dunstable Road. It is in fact the home of the applicant, Jeff Lynch. Uh, the current size of this property is 3.89 acres and we're located in the R30 zoning district. Um, this property, uh, members of the board, is bordered um, on two sides by City of Nashville Conservation Land. Uh, if you're familiar with the Hall's former Hall's Corner area, the Captain's Corner area, um, Mr. Lynch's house is just west of that open space. Uh, abutting the property is a single family home. Uh, that is the brother of the applicant, Mr. Lynch, and he'll be part of a subdivision plan that I'll represent in a minute. And we have a single family property owner also it is a butter um, to the south and Mr. Lynch has spoken to that prior to tonight's meeting. As background, uh, uh, there were variances in 2000 and 2009 granted uh, to Mr. Lynch for the construction of um, a barn in the back of the property. There was a height variance, an outdoor storage variance and a use variance in the past. This plan is similar to the one Carter had. It's got a little bit of color to it. Let's see if I can minimize it for you. Okay, great. So I'd like to just walk you through what, what's being proposed here. This is again, the subject, uh, subject site in the abutting property, his brother's lot. And what's being proposed uh, is a subdivision that will need to go through the planning board approval process um, where two lots will be consolidated and then resubdivided to create four lots. Two of the existing homes will remain. And so we're talking about two new lots. So here's Mr. Lynch's existing home, and that will remain. A new lot will be created in the middle along Main Dunstable Road, a compliant R30 uh, zoning lot. And then this property, his brother's property, will in fact have slightly less land, but it'll also be a compliant lot. And what's being created is a 2.73 acre parcel that has proper frontage, which lot depth, all the requirements, but it's a little bit bigger in the back than it certainly is in the front. A driveway will come back to the proposed home. Mr. Lynch proposes to build about a 4,400 square foot home. And you can see the existing barn that's located there. Uh, he would also like to construct a proposed barn, proposed barn addition. And that barn would measure 6,000 square feet. Uh, Mr. Lynch needs the space for storage of a motorhome. He has several antique tractors and also for personal items that he's accumulated over the years. The variance request that Jerry will speak to in a minute uh, is 19264. It's a definition that an accessory use area shall not exceed 40% of the area of the, of the structure or the lot. So we're talking about the barn structure, the existing and proposed, 3,600 square feet, 6,000 square feet. The total will be 9,600 square feet. When you divide that by the land area, it only comprises 8%. And so we're compliant with that part of the definition. The part of the definition where we exceed 40% is when you take the 9,600 square feet of barn area and you compare it to the proposed house upon lot 199, future lot 199-2, and that represents 218%. And that's the reason for the request. So it is a proposed subdivision that creates this lot. We'll be going to the planning board uh, in the near future, four lots into two. The request is to expand the barn. The barn uh, will be built in traditional barn fashion. Um, the height of the barn right now is an accessory use as a 20 foot height limitation. Um, the barn has yet to be designed, yet, Mr. Chairman, uh, but right now we'll, our testimony is that it will be compliant. And if it exceeds the 20 feet, Mr. Lynch has the right to come back and seek relief for height in the future. Um, so with that, um, Carter, I will go ahead and turn my presentation over to, to Jerry as he'll address the, the zoning matters for this application. I'll be happy to answer questions when we're done. Okay. 
Okay, so we're, we're waiting for Attorney Premier. I, I, I haven't seen him on this. Uh, on this. He was present at the very beginning, but it's like like at Stathia, he dropped he out. dropped off, yeah. Mm. Huh. May I ask the board for a, a, a two minute recess, which I can try to reach Mr. Pruny, or I'd hate oh. to have our time uh, clicking. Um, sure, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, we take a recess. Yeah, we're gonna take a recess for five minutes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the. Uh, the time. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I was just on the phone with Attorney Prunier. Uh, he's alive and well. He's in his office, but he's got technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you could always call him by telephone if you need to. Um, you know, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, we would like to respectfully request. Um, maybe a postponement <clears throat> postponement to the next meeting, if you don't mind. I, I don't feel I'm qualified to talk about the legal points of the variance. Um, it's an unfortunate situation that Jerry's unable to, to participate in the Zoom call. Um, and so we would respectfully ask if we could be uh, placed on the next available agenda and we'll represent and, and uh, we'll make sure Attorney Prunier is available to um, prepare and, and speak to this case. I, I don't see a problem with that. So we will um, uh, table this to a, what they call the date certain, uh, August 24th. August 24th would be the, the next available meeting because the, uh, the notice is an agenda for the, uh, the, the uh, what? No, that is, that is two weeks, the next one. Okay. No, the first case. Yeah. Okay. So August 24th, uh, any objections from the rest of the board? Okay. Um, I don't think we have to vote on that. All right, so uh, this case is tabled until the August 24th meeting, and we'll take it up then. Uh, I, I, I thank you very much. We need to take a motion. Yeah, so, yeah, so so yeah, okay, so I will make a motion to table uh, this case number three, 496 Main Dunstable Road, to the August 24th meeting. Uh, do I have a second? Thank you, Mr. Boucher. Um, Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Vote in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? I vote in favor, and I just a suggestion that maybe Jim could have uh, the attorney in his office, and then that would <laughs> be, ensure that this doesn't happen again. So that, that, would, that could certainly help. Uh, Mr. McCarra, how do you vote? Or visit the president. Ms. McCarra votes in favor. Uh, Ms. McKay, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Ms. McKay votes in favor. Excuse me. And I, uh, Mr. Lyle, vote in favor. Okay, so that uh, case is tabled to the August 24th meeting. I thank you very much. I apologize for the inconvenience, um, but uh, um, we'll make sure Jerry's ready in two weeks. Yeah, these, these things happen. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. All right. Uh, let's see. So we have no hearing request. Thank goodness. I, so. <laughs> I, you know, I get a little tired of them after a while. Okay, we have uh, an agenda for the August 24th meeting. Um, there are currently two cases on there, but we've just added a third. So, not that it, fast. Hmm? I'm not that fast. Not that fast. No. <laughs> um, does anybody see any regional impact for the two cases that are on here? Because the, this case, we already had said we had no regional impact. I don't see any. Uh, well, Ms. McKay, do you see any regional impact? No, I do not. Okay, so there's no regional impact. Very good. Uh, we have minutes from the uh, July 27th meeting. Has uh, everybody had a chance to review them? And are there any comments or corrections? No comments or corrections. No. Ms. McKay, are you okay with the minutes? Um, I think I'm going to abstain. I wasn't here, and so I don't. I have no frame of reference. Okay. Um, you didn't detect, detect any spelling errors. Or... No. <laughs> okay. Never. Uh, okay. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from July 27th. Mr. Boucher, second. Um, Ms. McKay, you you can vote on on this if you wish. Uh, Vote to approve the minutes. Um, 
or you can abstain your choice. Um, I think I'll be correct and I will abstain. Okay, Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? I vote. Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Currier, how do you vote? <clears throat> Mr. Currier votes in favor. Mr. McCarrick, how do you vote? Mr. McCarrick votes in favor. Uh, and I, Mr. Lino, votes in favor. It's for nothing. The minutes are approved. Um, I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, Mr. Mincara seconded. Yep. So we are adjourned at 7.42 p.m.